Hello again and welcome. Recently there's been some discussion up on the EV blog about the new Bryman BM789. One of the topics that came up was calibration and people were talking about the Bryman BM869S. Of course this is the meter that I frequently use. I own a fluke reference standard. So what I did is I connected my BM869S in parallel with my original HP 3341A. Again that's my bench meter and the two compared pretty close. After that, another person brought up that they really only used the 869S for DC volts and millivolts. So I thought what I'd do is supply the BM869S with a 500 millivolt signal. And there was a little bit of difference. This is the actual meter that I used. You can tell by the backside. This one came from TME. I think I said I bought this in October of 2016. So it's coming up on seven years old now. It was very clear in those posts that none of my equipment in this lab is calibrated. I think we measured, I don't know, like 30 microvolts out. And I think the tolerance for the meter is like 120. But for a sanity check, I thought I would also run this gas in MetroWatt. This thing was reading basically dead on with the HP meter right down to the last digit. But one of the things I had mentioned before that is that I was going to try the test using the 121GW. And unfortunately this thing was wandering all over the place. So I made a short video where I showed these three meters. So there was a couple of questions about that test. One of them was, was this meter damaged at the time I ran all my transient tests? Now again, if you don't remember, I had purchased two of these meters. This is the second one. These were bought at the same time just for this evaluation. You'll notice the meter on the right is production one. The meter on the left is production two. Production one has never been exposed to any kind of testing except functional. Production two is the one that I actually beat the snot out of. And you can tell. Listen to the switch. See how quiet it is? And compare that with this one. So production 2 is the meter that was exposed to the 50,000 cycle test. It's also the meter that got hit with a gas grill igniter that uh, caused the high leakage. And then we went on to transient test this meter which permanently damaged it. So this meter no longer works. So again the reason for buying this second meter was to actually have one that would remain in pristine condition that I could use as a reference. So a few other members that have the 121 GW repeated my test. And in all cases so far, those were stable. One of them had talked about the serial number, and I think they said that theirs was a six-place serial number. You could see on this one, this is a nine-place serial number. So I wondered if the older meters used the six-place serial number. Of course, we have this prototype meter that Dave provided. So I checked this one out, and you can see it still uses a nine-place serial number. I thought for fun I'd repeat the test using this meter. Again, this meter has been highly modified to survive my transient testing. That and with it being a prototype meter, I'm not expecting that this is going to behave like the production meter, but as soon as I hooked this thing up to my reference, again, it started wandering just like my other 121GW. So a little bit about my setup. I had used two sets of these Pomona Banana to Alligator Clip sets, and I had twisted up the leads. Not real tight, but basically about like this. And I had done that with both meters. And then I clipped these back to my reference source. And so the two meters were in parallel in all cases. And for all the meters that I looked at, which also included the UT181A, all the meters were stable except the 121GW. So I started wondering if maybe this thing was picking up some noise. So I had taken some clamp-on ferrite and I was snapping this over the cable and that made no difference at all. So I'm a little curious as to what's going on with the meter. So I thought what we'd do is just run a little test here. All I'm going to do is connect up our cable like so. I'm going to grab another set and let's just hook these up to my BM869S. We'll go ahead and turn both meters on. We'll place them to their millivolt mode. And of course both meters are wandering around while these are not terminated. That's normal. Now what I'm going to do is just short the two leads together like so. 
and you can see there's a little bit of offset I'm not really concerned with that but notice how stable these are let me just let these sit here a little bit I mean, you can see this 121 is very stable. Let's just try this same test with the prototype meter. Again, it's very stable. So I wonder, maybe there's a susceptibility problem with this design. Again, I'm not sure what would be the actual source of the noise. The uh, lab right now is fairly quiet. Of course, there's a lot of equipment that I do use in this lab that could certainly generate enough interference to knock these meters out, but I wasn't running anything like that at the time. Uh, performing these tests so I'm not really sure what would be the problem so this piece of coax is going back to my RF generator what I'm going to do is just attach all four leads to one side of our banana connector what I'm going to do now is just sweep the RF generator and let's just see if there's any kind of sweet spot where the 121 GW has an issue this is a Marconi RF generator as a rotary position sensor that you can use to set the frequency and the amplitude I'm going to just sweep this thing by hand just a side point I had looked at a sigillant arb that used a rotary encoder as just a really bad design I had asked sigillant if their higher end generators behave the same way sounds like they do I never got a clear answer on that I was just pretty surprised but one of the comments was you're turning the knob too fast <laughs> I mean really that's the response not that we got a shitty ass design so yeah I'm not gonna be buying any uh, sigillant equipment for this lab anytime soon here you go I'm just rotating this up and I'm just looking to see if there's a spot where this meter starts wigging out from there maybe we can identify what the source is oh interesting so this is like 80 megahertz there's a 19 Oh, look at this. It's getting worse. Oh, that's pretty crazy. So I'm peeking out right here. You can see this is at a 110.1 megahertz. <laughs> look at that thing just wander. So that's interesting because that happens to be smack in the center of the FM radio band let's just see if there's another spot where this thing has an issue well before we do that let's just take our Gauss and Metrowatt and we'll attach our second set of leads to the input of it alright so this is 70 megahertz here again I'm just gonna slowly start working my way up I mean, there I'm all the way up to 126 megahertz and you can see it has no effect on this gossip meter as well and let's just continue our sweep and we'll see if there's other areas where the meter is susceptible just an FYI this is all the way up to 122 megahertz and you can see it settled back down here we're at 207 Looks like it may be susceptible to the second harmonic. Three hundred megahertz. It sure looks like it's susceptible to hundred megahertz and any harmonic of it. Again, this is four hundred megahertz. 
this is 416 you can see as I just move right around those harmonic spots though she just starts wigging out like this is 395 right here here I'm all the way up to about 800 megahertz let's just continue on up doesn't look like we're gonna see anything else exciting here we are at a gig so this is the limit of this RF generator at 2.4 gigahertz so it really looks like it's susceptible to the lower bands and it seems most susceptible in that 100 megahertz region so I wonder now if having these cables even though they're twisted up is this providing enough of an antenna to affect our 121 GW it's also possible that maybe that it doesn't have adequate shielding in the meter itself although just sitting on the bench like this is kind of odd because right now with the two leads shorted we're not seeing this exhibit the same problem that I did when I hooked it up on the rack of course that rack is all made out of metal I'm assuming that makes a hell of an antenna and it's very possible that that is coupling through to these leads where now I have it out on a bench there's nothing metallic here it's possible that's part of the problem so what I've done here is I've wrapped my 121 GW in aluminum foil and I've also covered up the entire cabling going back to the reference again the two meters are tied in parallel as before it's the same clip leads really the only difference is I've added all this shielding to the meter of course this ties back to this ground plane which is also grounded so you can see our reference standard is not warmed up yet I don't really care about that what I do care about is how much this meter moves around so let's just see if it wanders at all it doesn't look like it's going to people that wrote in they said that thing was stable within a count and it's looking like mine is too So I don't think whatever the problem is, it doesn't look like it's conducted. It looks like it's radiated susceptibility. Huh. We'll just let her sit. work I've ran into the same problem where you'll take a handheld meter into the chamber you're trying to take some measurement and the meter is wonking out so even at work we've seen where certain meters are more susceptible to RF than others I've ran into this with the oscilloscopes as well let me just see if I can find some photos for you I've got one that's pretty comical where I basically wrap this whole oscilloscope in aluminum foil while I've got it inside of the chamber running these tests so quite comical the things you have to do I'm sure I'm not the only engineer that's played with aluminum foil like this this is actually one of the primary tools I use when I'm trying to sort out RF problems wow just a huge difference that meter is just stable as a rock huh. well I think that's going to be it for this video those of you that are not having problems it does kind of make sense that maybe in my area I've just got enough RF and you know the cables being again strung out the way I've got them that the meters just picking up the local stations sure does seem to be something like that well hopefully you enjoyed the video till the next time we'll see you then later